lot of you guys are leaving here this year. You have some seniors and we have some underclassmen, but you are leaving this place going into another world. I was reading a good book the other day and it was talking about Joshua. And the Lord came to Joshua and he said, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Moses is dead. Let me give it to you another way. Big Mama is gone. Daddy is gone. Now some of you may have your parents, but some of you have the realization that it is gone. As you are a high school senior, you remember the day, Mama, can I have some gas money? Mama, would you give me this? Give me that. Well, give me got drowned in a cocoa bottle when you, when you graduate. When you graduate, it's time to grow up. It's time to get a job. It is real. <clears throat> My third point is, now even though you visualize it, and now you're going to apply it, next up is you must surround yourself around positive people. So we got visualization, right? Application and association. <clears throat> Now, I gave you three H's. I, know, I don't know if that word is a word, but it sounded good coming out. But, <laughs> but you must surround yourself around positive people. There was a, there was a guy on television the other day. He, he got out of prison. He's been out of prison for the last seven years. He has a successful business. And it was interviewing <coughs> inmates who got out of prison and who were doing well. And they asked him, you was in a life of crime for so many years, and we let you out, and we thought you was coming back. What changed about you? He said, I changed my surroundings. I changed the people I hang with. And he said this right here. If you're the smartest person in your group, you're in the wrong group. <laughs> he said, you need people who are going to pour something into you. But if you're in a group and everybody always comes to you for, for advice, if you're the smartest person, what happened is you're not getting poured into. You're pouring out. And eventually you will become empty. One more thing on television. He said, look, if I look at anybody in this room, and if I look at five of your closest friends, I can tell you where you'll be in five years from now. Association. Association. Big Mama said it another way. If you hang around dogs, you catch fleas. <laughs> I want to put it on the bottom shelf. If you hang around dogs, you're going to catch fleas. So you got to watch who you're associating with. Your friends can elevate you, and they also can bring you down. I saw a young lady the other day, I was at a restaurant, it's called De La Rue or something like that. And they was playing some music Charles Carter was singing. I was sitting there and I was eating my dinner and he was a one-man band up there singing. And one of the songs came on, Wobble Wobble. And I'm like, Wobble Wobble? And I saw the ladies get up and dancing and they were wobbling. So, and, but the person who was the most impressive was a lady up there. She had one arm and over here she had a, a nub. It wasn't even my arm, it was a nub. And man, was she wobbling, wobbling. I was looking at her like she didn't have no shame in her game. She was happy. She believed in herself. And the person was like, well, I know she ain't. Gonna, I know she ain't. <laughs> and, and yes, she did. <laughs> Outdanced everybody on the floor. And people started cheering for her. You know why they cheered for her? For a person with one arm. They was inspired by her being strong and courageous. She didn't care what Nene and Pookie said about her. <laughs> she didn't care what others. She came there to have a good time, and guess what she did? And when I walked out, I just wanted to go shake her hand. Because to have that inside of you and to exhibit it in front of everybody else, I just think that was just awesome. I was reading a book not too long ago that was talking about multiple levels of intelligence. <clears throat> and some people get caught up in, in, in things like if they can score high on a test score, they're more valuable. That's not true. There's different types of intelligence. There are people who are people smart. There are people who are good with their hands. There are people who are visual learners. There are people who learn by hearing. There's different levels of, of learning. And so what you got to realize, I don't know what you're going into in life, but two, if you want to be successful in life, but once you figure out, once you figure out what you enjoy, <laughs> and what you are good at, it's going to open so many doors for you, and people are going to be looking at you in just in amazement. In amazement. So what I'm saying to you today is, I don't know what your major is. Don't be a teacher because your mother's a teacher. Mm -hmm. Don't drive trucks because your daddy mm -hmm. drives trucks. Mm -hmm. Don't be a doctor because your neighbor is a doctor. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying, those are great fields, outstanding fields. But make sure that that's the heart for you. I worked at a job once before, and it was a job paying good money, but I was miserable. Mm -hmm. They always say money don't make you happy, mm -hmm. but being broke will make you sick. <laughs> <laughs> so it's necessary, right? It's right up there with O2. <laughs>
But what I'm saying to you, I worked at a job and I was there for eight hours and I kept saying I'm here for, I got seven hours and 45 minutes. I got seven hours and, who done counted down? Come on. I'm going to the bathroom, let's keep it real, I'm going to the bathroom, uh, reading the newspaper, acting like I'm busy when the boss come around. But what I'm saying to you, my mother told me a long time ago, if you're doing something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I knew when I was in school, one thing I loved about school, it was recess. I loved to play. <laughs> so when they asked me, what's your major in college PE? <laughs> I grabbed in that. I throw cookouts. I like to have fun. And some people may bash you in that, but I'm going to tell you what, as far as going into PE, and I also took classes in strength and conditioning, I trained people. People just come to me all the time, train me. And people laugh now, but exercise is an important thing. You can make it. I had a teacher once, she told, I was teaching at a school, I was a PE coach, she told me, you know, you guys, y'all, you know, y'all had an easy major. You know, you got a PE degree. And she was in chemistry. You know, you know people be trying to talk big, they, be from, they come from Atlanta, they're like, oh, y'all do that in Nashville? And, you know, we in Atlanta, we do this. I'm like, you know what, you keep bragging about Atlanta, but when you're there, you don't go to the Brave games. You don't go to the Falcon games. You, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, some people come down and try to belittle you, but what I'm saying to you is, when you go into something that you really love, time flies when you're having fun. Amen. And you're going to excel in it. So don't let anybody out here discount you. If those <laughs> folks discount you, they're not meant for you. And it's okay for folks not to like you. I'm going to say it again. Amen. Don't try to beat them. He said it on the film. The worst thing you can do is try to please everybody. Mm -hmm. You line yourself up with the good book, mm -hmm. the golden rule. Mm -hmm. You treat people right. Mm -hmm. You speak to people, you have a positive attitude, mm -hmm. and when you do all of that, mm -hmm. when you do steps A and B, mm -hmm. life will see its way for you. Mm -hmm. So if I treat you right, if I'm good to you, and you still dislike me, well guess what? It's always. So you can let the doorknob hit you. <laughs> what I'm saying to you, I'm not saying get rid of everybody in your life, but I'm just saying when you apply the golden rule, and you've done all you can, and that's all you can, they still don't like you, that's not the group for you. That's not the person for you. That's not the heart for you. And guess what? It's okay. I'm not Whitney Houston, but she said, it's okay. It's all right. I'm going to make it anyway. Mm -hmm. And ladies, you are valuable. You're precious. These little young boys out here, I know your parents done told you, but I'm not Chris Brown, but these boys ain't loyal. <laughs> <laughs> they play the win. They're going to tell you what they want to tell you. I'm not hating. I'm just, I got a daughter now. So I was with the fellas, but I'm not even. So what I'm saying to you, keep your eyes on the prize. These little boys and these little girls going to be there. And, and look, I, I saw, saw a young, um, young um, lady the other day. She was like, she was trying to get a good man and this and this. And I saw a guy. He want to find a good woman. I said, you know what? Stop trying to find a good woman and be that good man. When you be that good man, they're going to find you. Ladies, when you be that good woman, they're going to find you. But you got to ask the Lord for the spirit of discernment because they'll become in all shapes.